What's going on YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Ademir and this is the Hard Black Truth. Boy, oh boy, am I really kind of pissed off. Uh, I say this time and time again, I try to keep this channel clean, but I I don't think I'm going to be able to do so on this video. There was a story that came across my timeline, I want to say 24 to 48 hours ago. And it says that more than a dozen Georgia families buy land to create safe city for people of color. So me being the man who I am, when I read that and I see that they show the black family and they got the I run with mod shirt on, but then I see people of color. I already take it for the Trojan horse that it is because you're using this codified language that is meant to tell black people, yes, it's you, but it's ambiguous enough where it can mean anything, anyone, so long as you're not white. And while many of us would view that as a victory in it of itself, I say more needs to be done. But you know what? I, I decided, let me go ahead and just read a little bit about it. Let me just get a little bit more context about this. Because what I saw in the comment section immediately below this, and I will have links posted in the description. When I tell you it is outrageous, the examples that I'm getting ready to show you, I, I'm... I'm almost at a loss for words. But the story goes on to say a group of 19 black families in Georgia has purchased nearly 97 acres of land to create a safe haven for people of color, CNN reported this past Saturday. The land, which was purchased by the families in August, is located just east of Macon in rural Wilkinson County, Georgia. Pay attention to the name because I suspect that you might be hearing little rumors and things, murmurings about this particular area. The purchase was organized by the Freedom Georgia Initiative, a group that co-founder and Vice President Ashley Scott said is necessary to promote a strong community among blacks following the civil unrest prompted by the killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor. Now, for those of you who are wondering, uh, this is Miss Ashley Scott. I don't know if those are her children. I don't know if she is, has a significant other. I am always wary when I see uh, women, and, I, and call me what you want, but I am always weary when I see women at the helm of any organization that calls itself doing for black people, mostly because sometimes when you tend to go behind the curtains, behind the scenes, you find someone else. And, you know, I can't really just say that about women either. You know, there are plenty of organizations where you got black men at the helm and, you know, you find out that there's some other folks pulling the strings behind the scenes. Nevertheless, when you go just to learn a little bit about the Freedom Georgia Initiative, it says we are a black owned, woman owned, family owned. I do appreciate that veteran managed limited liability company organized in Georgia for the social and economic benefit of our members. Now, that can be subject to change. Uh, it goes on to say our LLC seeks to support black owned women-owned, veteran-owned businesses by providing contracts 
to well-qualified vendors to do business with our company. So at the end of the day, aside from the questionable language, and I'm going to question everything, I do appreciate they said uh, black family or family owned, you know, they, they put that in there. But, you know, the definition of black family is so broad. And if you go by the current state of affairs, it really doesn't include men. I, I, again, I am just extremely uh, pessimistic about having another Black Lives Matter like energy around this organization, but that's neither here nor there at the end of the day. Families got together, 19 of them. 19, 19. Now, shout out to the Black Authority. I hear him give the example of, you know, five women getting together, or just a group of five people just get together and put your funds together and invest in something. And he talks about the challenges of that. The fact that you're not talking about getting two people to agree on some or three people to get it to agree on some or even four. You're talking about five folks here. They got 19 people. Well, got together, organized and decided that, you know, have it panned out. They made it work. They brought the land. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not that's nothing to shake your leg at. Now, granted, 97 acres is a drop in a bucket on the planet Earth, but you could do a hell of a whole lot with 97 damn acres. OK, I, I grew up listening to the commercials for uh, Great Adventures, and they would talk about how it was 16 acres of fun. And then when you actually visited that park, yeah, they crammed a whole lot into that space, but it was so spacious. So I'm not trying to say we're going to have amusement parks and all this stuff. I'm just saying it's a lot of land to work with and hopefully be able to transform into something that is a benefit to our people. And if them turning it into a haven, however that pans out, they should be able to do just that. There is no harm in what they have done. And again, this was a direct reaction to the recent set of ongoing killings. I could say recent, but I have to be clear that this has been an ongoing thing. And would you believe, would you believe that if you go to the Twitter post of this, you come across hateful ass comments such as this on your screen. One person writes, and this is Stephen J. Frisch, whatever, whatever. When will this country finally become a safe he heaven for all good people? When will we become a truly humane land? When will reason overtake hate? Now, I'm unsure but i i think when i looked at the body of this man's work and what he's really trying to say is fuck y'all y'all can't be having that over there it should be for everybody not just for you and that right there is fucked up it's just so fucked up that you would even go there while these 19 families should be able to stand with their head held high and they chest out proud of themselves at least they made a they haven't done any of the real work yet although i'm sure that they are getting to it but damn you're gonna just shit on their parade like that another person comes out and says democrats have single-handedly destroyed everything mlk died for simply amazing well the libertarian trap if you are a real person all I can say is, bitch, shut the fuck up, okay? Now, if you want to sit here and tell me what Martin Luther King died for, you go right on ahead. Just don't expect me to listen to you. And let me be frank, if for, for by some means you or someone that's like-minded as you happens to hear me say this, if this is what you think Martin Luther King uh, was about not being able to own and control, well then, yes, he died and, and we 
single-handedly destroyed it. I say we, black people, because you can't keep trying to point to Democrats for all of the things that black folks do for themselves. Now, I don't know if there was any uh, additional funding that came about. I'm sure there could have been. Again, I'm, I'm real leery about all of these things. And I could wind up making a video later on down the road telling you, as I've had in the past with so many other uh, uh, organizations that have come out and you think that they're pro-black and then you find out they have alternative agendas. You can't just do us like that. Regardless of whether you want to say it was Democrat or not, you know, you're, you're wrong for, for coming out with this stance. And yeah, I may again come out having to say, you know, I was wrong. They were playing us against ourselves because white supremacy, as many of you know, will enjoy playing both sides of the fence. So you have one white supremacist who decides to do this under the cover of black people telling you it's black folk doing this, which I'm going to go and say that it is because that's what I've read and that's what I've seen. But then they turn around and, and, and on the other end, draw up all the hype, get us arguing with each other over something that there really should be no argument about. You got this other person, funny, his name is Ortiz, but he has the American flag on both sides. He says, congratulations, Democrats, you brought segregation back. Bitch, what the fuck do you want? What do you guys want? One person writes. And this is an indifferent pain. These folks got some real fucked up names online. Replace the word black with the word white and see what happens. If it's not okay one way, it's not okay. Man, fuck y'all. And this is the shit I be talking about. And you know, it's funny because I just had a conversation with some dudes in my local neighborhood. And I was telling them how, you know, we need to have reparations. And, you know, they, they I was quickly shut down. I ain't gonna lie. I was almost shame. They, they sh straight up told me it ain't going to happen. You running around talking about reparations. They ain't going to give us nothing. And I'm sitting here like, well, you know, if we keep at it, you know, they, they going to have to give it to us or we going to have to take it. But you know what? At the end of the day, the bottom line is we don't have it. And, and, and that was the only argument that they had to make against me. And there's very little I could say. Well, it's coming. Well, shit. Martin Luther King said that. Malcolm X, I'm sure, probably said something like that or intimated it, you know? Or if they didn't say it's coming, they said, you know, it, it'll be years on down the road. And how much longer are we going to keep on saying years on down the road or it's coming? Or maybe not not in our time, but in um, our children's time, our children's children's time. And, you know, bottom line is we don't have reparations. We don't have any tangibles. So a group of 19 black families came together and bought some property to do something tangible. It says for people of color, we'll take that with a grain of salt. But then the white folks come out mad. One person writes, the south side of Chicago is 93% African American. It is not a safe place. Quite the opposite. Now there is Detroit, which is 83% African American. There are many more examples. Why would this new city, or why would the new city be different? Well, bitch, first of all, because it is owned. And I would hope to say owned and controlled by black people. It will either survive and go on until you guys try to find a way to burn it down or pollute the air or pollute the water or just do something crazy. Or we will fall to our own demise. But bringing up areas like Chicago and Detroit, when we don't own or control none of what goes out there, those are two totally different examples. But why all the hatred? What the, Again, what the fuck do you guys want? I mean, damn it. We can't take a knee. We can't protest. We can't protest with arms. We can't go to Congress. We can't beseech our presidential candidates. We, we just can't do anything. And it's this sick energy 
from my own people that I'm witnessing where folks are becoming indifferent. Yeah, a lot of folks are waking up, but they ain't waking up to 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 look at things in a more optimistic way. They 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 waking up and realize, man, the shit's already hit the fan. We are too far gone, many of them believe. And you know what? They have all evidence to prove it. As much as I may not like to admit it. And then when we do decide to do something for ourselves, we're not allowed to do it for ourselves. Come the fuck on. How is it that there's a Chinatown and you don't hear or see any of these motherfuckers saying any of this shit? If you really had that same amount of energy there wouldn't be chinatowns there wouldn't be little italy's there wouldn't be these places for you to go and, and uh, you know spend your money and have a good time taking part of the rich culture and eating those nice foods and buying those nice garments so you can sit there and pose and shit but when black folks decide, you know what, we got to do something too. We need to have a little something, something too. Before we can even put the shovel in the dirt, you got motherfuckers out here making comments. This person put, uh, could you imagine if white people bought land where only other white people could live? LOL. It would be front page news for weeks, causing nonstop outrage and protests and end up going to the Supreme Court. Bitch. You can you can count the whole west half of the United States of America. Probably before that. Where the government would give grants to developers who had to put in their clause that only white people could live there. Do you understand that that Method was so routine, it was so prevalent that if you go to many of these communities out there where you see an overwhelming abundance of white folks, if you look on the bylaws of those neighborhoods, those townships, you will find it written in there. So this idea that it hasn't happened before, now granted this person, Alan, didn't actually say it that way, but let's be real, it did happen. And it didn't have to go to a Supreme Court specifically for that. It wasn't the talk of the time. It wasn't an outrage. It was none of that shit. It was a way of life. Black people had to adapt and adjust to that bullshit. And you're perfectly fine with that. But yet you're going to come out here and throw little sly comments and remarks at black folks for trying to own and control their own piece of goddamn property so that they can help out black people. What the fuck do you guys want? Here we got another Yahoo. The article is pretty vague. Uh, yeah, it is kind of vague, though. The article is kind of vague. Again, I'll have the link posted in the description for you so you can read and assess all of this yourself. How exactly will it be made safer than any other neighborhood or community? If it's pro-black... What does that mean for people of other ethnicities who wish to live there or operate a business? Well, first of all, pro-black should mean that you can aid and assist in making sure that pro-blackness is respected. That people are able and allowed to be black first without having to feel any shame or repercussions because of that. You understand? Second of all, you ain't got to worry about other ethnicities because black folks don't do that. Now, I don't seek to or, 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 or claim to know exactly how they're going to run those things. Again, it might end up being some shit that I don't agree with at the end of the day. But right now it says it's for black people. I'm going to assume that it's going to be for black people. It's going to be ran by black people. I'm assuming that the businesses there are going to be black owned businesses. And that's what I expect to see. That's what I hope to see. And I hope that it flourishes. And I hope that fuckers like this guy, Adam Town out of Texas, I hope he gets fired up mad as hell. And just so you know that, you know, as far as politics go, 
These motherfuckers are bold and, and, you know, the best thing you could do as a black individual when it comes to politics right now is to withhold your vote. I think the biggest message that could be sent isn't that you're going to go out there and vote for anybody because nobody's offering any tangibles for your black ass. Even the folks that you want to say, you know, vote locally. You got to vote on a local level. On a local level, ain't nobody trying to do nothing for your black ass. So let the shit go as it may. Now, you get some folks coming out here talking about the people, talking about doing something specifically in your area, and that's worth it to you, then by all means, you vote how you want to vote. I'm just telling you what I would do. If there's somebody coming talking about something in my area that's going to benefit me and my peoples, regardless whether they say it's just for black people or not, you know, I'm, I'm cool with maybe casting a vote for whoever it may be. But other than that, if you ain't coming about talking about no tangibles, if you ain't going to be sitting there talking about anything that's going to specifically aid and benefit me and mine and my people as a whole where we reside, I ain't got no reason to vote for you. This motherfucker wants to be in the Senate. Daniel McCarthy. Please look his ass up. Please look his ass up. And what Daniel McCarthy wrote, I mean, how hateful can you be? He puts so woke that they're bringing back segregation. Man, fuck y'all. Fuck y'all to death, man. Fuck y'all. For real, for real. Man, go to hell with that bullshit. That shit's foul. That's fucked up. That you would sit there and say that to a people who are trying to do something positive. Come the fuck on, man. Come the fuck on. I mean, what, what can black people do that isn't going to trigger you guys to be on alert? We can't fucking move an inch. We can't do a damn thing without you guys having to be involved somehow. There was another story. There was a similar story that came about. And, and, and I forget what it was, so I, I, if you guys happen to remember, let me know. But I want to say this was going to be for an event of some sort, or, or it, was, it was supposed to be for something that was supposed to be specifically for black folks. And then all the non-blacks got outraged and were like, well, why are you going to do that? And that just ain't right. And why can't we do something specifically for as a matter of fact i want to say it was a black lives matter event of all the people that you would expect to have to defend their stance as being unapologetically black black lives it was a black lives matter event where i want to say they, they wanted to do it for one day they wanted to be able to have a concert or festivities or something for black people it may have even just been black women i'm not specifically entirely sure but i'm sure you guys can look that up but do you know that they got lit up online because they didn't want to allow other folks to participate so all of a sudden now it was a problem and i'm like yo why the fuck is it that when black people decide to have church we got to have the overseer in there this shit's so entrenched in our fucking culture People don't even sit there and realize that this is what's going on. When you got folks that come out here and make these comments, literally, they are wanting to play overseer. No white person hears about a group of 19 families buying up property and immediately decides to themselves, well, that's a bad thing. Well, let me make sure what they're doing. Oh, they're doing it for black people. That's a bad thing. What the fuck do you want us to do then? What is it that you want? You want us to continue to sit here and pretend that we're American like the rest of you? When we get killed off, disenfranchised, redlined, all of that because we're black. Because you can see who we are. You can hear who we are. You can recognize who we are. And you've decided that we are not you. And you've made that decision long ago since you attempted to found this country. Since you used us to build this country. We can't protest against you. We can You had two officers that were just killed last night. Just did a video on that. Little midget child or something went in and, and dumped their gun on some officers. Two officers just sitting there. And they out there trying to blame black people already. God forbid it's a black person that they find out who, if they find out who it is. 
And you're going to see all these same motherfuckers that have been online talking shit. They're going to come out and say something. Well, what is it you want us to do? We can't fight you back. We can't shoot your ass. We can't protest. We can't stand. In, we, what can we do? You take a knee, we get mad. The goddamn NFL players stood locked shoulder to shoulder in solidarity. And they got booed. What the fuck do you want? Just say you want us dead so that we can get the ball rolling. Just say you want to kill us so that we can get the ball rolling. Let's just go ahead and get to where we need to get. Because right now we're procrastinating. Let's just get the ball rolling. Because the sooner we can get this shit over with, the sooner you can find black people on top where we should be, where we long should have been. Doing right not only by ourselves, but humanity at large. And this isn't me trying to throw shots and say that nobody else can do it. But right now it ain't happening. I've said enough. You guys let me know how you feel about this situation. My name is Ottoman. Holla at me. Peace.